Stick my little lightsaber in your eye tonight. Ruin your vision for the rest of your life. Anyways. <clears throat> Whew. So yeah, um, I just finished watching Last Jedi. And I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> and though, for the record, this will be probably, well, it will be, it'll be spoiler, so. <clears throat> um, um, yeah, um is probably the best way to say it. I just finished watching it. First off, it's two hours and 30 minutes long. Damn. Anyways, <sighs> I don't even know where to begin. Um, now, as I was doing it, I also did a little, uh, I also did, like, an actual video with the camera, so I'll have to upload that later, too, but I don't know how I feel about this movie. Now, I'm not exactly sure where all the hatred came from. I didn't hate it, oddly. Like, there were people saying it, be, it should be stricken from canon. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not, I have to go and watch. Because I didn't watch anything up to this point. I took in no information. I, I basically watched it blind for the first time today. This is what, March 15th. Um, so I had no idea what it was going in. I mean, I had suspicions and whatnot, but... Um, the movie has a really weird vibe. It has like a weird, the humor is weird, the, I don't know, it's, it's weird. I don't hate it, but it's weird. It's like, it didn't feel like Star Wars to me, I'm sorry, it just didn't. It had Star Wars beats, it had Star Wars, you know, trappings skin, if you will, and a Star Wars skin, but it did not feel like Star Wars to me. Um, but everything was just really weird. It's only weird is the only way to describe it. Um, now I'm going to get this out of the way. Let's see if it's out of the way the first part. This is, this is a Disney movie. It's all, there's a lot of political bullshit. Um, the first, like, 15 minutes, I have to admit, I found it a little annoying that they were trying to check off the boxes of get all the freaking minorities in there, show, oh, there's a black guy, there's an Asian, there's this, that. Uh, now, I will say that once they got past that bullshit, the character of Rose, I actually enjoyed because they did it right. They introduced the character and they made me actually care about the character instead of just like, oh look, here's a black guy flying a you know Tie Fighter or whatever. It just it's like they purposely that one there's like whole one whole scene where they're just showing different people and they're getting like every ethnic culture and it's like oh look this one's in and this one's out yay. I just it feels like overkill for me. I know you're gonna not like that and you're gonna get pissy with me, but I don't care. It, 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 ugh. But once they got over that. Like, when I look at Finn, I don't see him as a black guy. I like the character. I watch it, it's like, okay, he's cool. I don't care. You know? It doesn't matter to me. But they purposely went out of their way in that one little montage where they're showing everybody flying around, and they're showing into the cockpit, and they're like, oh, well, this guy, you know, this one's represented, that one. It just, it just felt like, uh, I don't like that. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right, you know? And I think they did do it right later. I think, again, the character Rose, I enjoyed. I mean, she was kind of weird at first, but I liked her collectively. So, I, I, like I said, I want to get that out of the way, because I, I don't like... I, just, I don't like when movies do that nowadays, because it's like... They have to check off the box, and it just feels like they're pushing some political agenda instead of trying to tell a good movie. Now, they did ultimately tell a good movie. As far as her character, I'm not saying it was the greatest character ever or anything to that degree, but I cared. 
You know, I mean, not, maybe not to the point of like Luke's Luke Skywalker care, but she was mildly interesting. So I applaud them for that. I don't honestly applaud them for, oh, she has to be Asian, therefore, yay. I don't give a fuck about all that. You tell me a good story, and if it's got an Asian in it, great. If it doesn't, I don't give a fuck. Who cares? I'm sorry, I just don't care. But they, I, I think, like I said, they really did tell a good story with her. Now, again, it's not the greatest story. He's not going to win an award, but, you know, whatever. But, like, they purposely went through and they had to show all these characters that you never see, you never learn anything about, but it's like, oh, there's a black guy flying the ship, yay! Some random black dudes in the, uh... I just, I... Because you know they're doing it just... The only reason they got airtime is because of, you know, they want to show that. Now, if they wanted to tell me a story about that one random black guy, fine, awesome. It's, I don't know, it just, that bugs me, and I know you're going to get pissy with me. It just, it irritates me. Because you can see the political bullshit. Instead of, again, telling a good story and just moving the fuck on, I don't like that. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, but, like I said, they, they did well. See, because back in the day, like, people act like the original Star Wars was not diverse. Okay, yeah, it was relatively white humans per se but you had all the aliens the aliens were the ones that were diverse so to sit there and say well the original Star Wars wasn't diverse that's bullshit that's bullshit it, I'm sorry I don't like that I mean yeah okay fine so the, the base trilogy and the you know the one that everybody cares about um, the two trilogies, basically. It's essentially Darth Vader's story. Darth Vader's a white dude. He probably didn't have a lot of black friends. probably didn't have a lot of Asian friends. You know? So I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, it's racist because it doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Pe because, again, I'm sick and tired of people bringing in that bullshit into anything nowadays. Whether it's gaming, whether it's comics, whether... I, I don't care about that. Tell me a good story. You know? That's all I'm going to say on that. But once, again, once they got through that first initial 15 minutes of bullshit where it's like, show this cockpit, oh, we got this one, we got this one, we got this one, check, 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 off the little boxes, it then moved on into an, an okay story. I mean, again, not a stellar one, but an okay one. So, anyways, let's move on. Um, the humor was f weird. It, it was just... Weird. I don't know. I don't get it. I, I didn't get that part. There were a couple scenes that were funny. Like Leia made a comment to 3PO, which was funny. Um, when Luke told told Ray to reach out and she did, and he starts slapping her with the little the little palm leaf. That was funny. Weird. It was weird comedy and weird delivery and all that stuff. And just I don't know if it was I don't want to say out of place, but it was just kind of awkward. It was awkward humor, basically. And not in a good way, not like a funny, awkward, like, oh, your nuts are hanging out. No, this was, <laughs> I don't know, it's weird is the only way I can describe it. <clears throat> um, the thing with Yoda, that was weird. That was really weird. I was expecting this great dissertation, like, oh, you know, blah, 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 remember all the things I taught you, and... You know, blah blah blah. He it's like he didn't really say anything. It was like I don't know. I can't even describe it. It was really weird. Um, I don't know, man. A weird movie. Now I don't know. I don't get. I have to watch some videos now because I don't. Under, I don't really get why people were so butthurt over the movie collectively. Um. Because maybe there's just stuff I missed. Like, maybe there's some relevant points that I just didn't get or didn't see. So I want to take a chance to revise my initial opinion after I hear potential. Now, like, if I read comments or I see videos and people are like, Oh, this is stupid because blah, blah, blah. And it's something stupid. It makes no sense. 
okay, that's one thing. But, like, if somebody has a legitimate valid beef, where, like, this doesn't feel like Luke, or that didn't feel like Han, or uh, Yoda, excuse me, I could see that. Like, that did not feel like Yoda. It was weird. Um, I did like the moment where he met with three uh, R2, and they were on the Millennium Falcon. I, I liked that part. I thought that was good. Um, there was a, that really cool scene where uh, the two of them had their minds melded. And he wipes away, like, like water, and you see water on his hand after he's disconnected. So it was transferring, like, physicality from where she was to where he was. That was very cool. And that was very cool, because what I liked about that, especially when you realize the reveal at the end, um, that was really cool foreshadowing, actually, that that's a thing. Because we never really saw that before. I never really saw that ever, to be honest with you. Um, so that was cool. One thing I did like that I thought was cool was that Snoke explained how Rey has her powers. I like that. I thought that was a cool explanation. That because Ren has become is becoming so powerful that the Force balances itself out and someone else will rise up equally to, you know, if one's dark, one be light... And Snoke thought it was going to be Luke, and it turned out to be some random person. Now, I will say, I don't think her parents were just random trash traders. I think they're going to save that or do something with that later. Because I, th I think he was fucking with her. Like, oh, I know who your parents are. I think he was saying that to fuck with her, to get her to join him. So I think that, I think there might be something there. <clears throat> at least that's what I picked up on. Or at least felt. Could be a thing. Um, and she's, you know, because, because he, he asked her, like, who, what do you think, who do you think your parents were? And she's like, oh, I think they were just random, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, again, I think he was fucking with her. To make her think her parents were basically nobody. I wouldn't be surprised if, if the two of them are brother and sister. Somehow. I wouldn't be surprised if they... if I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, that might be a long shot. but Or she's Luke's daughter. Or she's Palpatine's granddaughter. Something. Something. Not just some random trash trader who abandoned their kid. Um... Because it would play out, because there were a lot of beats in this one that were very similar, like, they're trying to shoot down the that uh, battering ram thing, very reminiscent of the, uh, the trench run, um, so on and so forth. So if you put all that stuff into perspective, I think the two of them are brother and sister, which is probably why they have a connection. Now again, I'm speculating here, but I think that's going to be revealed in the next one. Because that would be very cool. That would be legitimately cool. Um, and it would mirror uh, Luke and Leia in a way. Because Luke kind of... He didn't really go dark side, but he went off grid. Which was kind of an interesting little take to it. I don't know how I feel about that, but I kind of get it. Um, and I like Luke's concepts of the way the Jedi act is very hubris and stuff. Um, and I like how they made it seem like Ren was the bad guy, and then Luke was the bad guy, and then Luke explains, well, no, I was going to do it, decided not to, and then he attacked me. I thought that was a cool little back and forth, um, moment. And I'm purposely, <laughs> I'm purposely, um taking my time not to get into the whole Snoke situation because <laughs> what the fuck was that? What the fuck? I mean, you got this Jedi who can pick people up and fling people around and do all this shit, but he didn't sense the stupid lightsaber? I, that was just weird. Uh, it was cool, but weird. Cool, but weird. That would be the best way to describe Last Jedi. Cool, but weird. Um... <clears throat> 
Like, there was no real battle. There was no... It's just like, hey, I've got the universe in my hand. Ha, ha. And then it was the end of him. And that was just so fucking stupid. And then there's no reveal of who the fuck he was. Um. Now, if he's that powerful, will he come back as, like, a ghost? Like, Yoda? I don't know. Um. Because that could be interesting, too, where he's not technically dead. Now, if he does turn out to be, um, uh, whatever the fuck his name was, uh, what the hell was his name? Uh, whatever his name is, the guy who could, uh, cheat death, um, that would be very cool. He com- He ends up coming back because he can cheat death. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, Darth Sidious talked about him. Um, Plagueis. Now, if he turned out to be Plagueis, that would be interesting, because he's not really gone. And, actually, it would work out, because if Ren was having second thoughts, or change of heart, so on and so forth, taking him out definitely turned him completely to the dark side, as in there's no question now. So, he may have sacrificed himself to push him over the edge, and he's going to come back however he can do that, using the Force or whatever. Because, again, Sidious, Sidious talked about that, how he could, you know, but he couldn't bring himself back. Whatever, however that, you know, but maybe he could. And then there's talk about he was, like, some sort of vampire guy. I've heard that theory. Um, so, I don't necessarily think he's dead. Um... I mean, he might be, like, physically dead right now, but I think there's a way he could come back. Potentially. Um. Because we don't really know who the fuck he is. I don't think they even explained who he was. Which, what the fuck? Because if they explain that in the next one, that's going to be very cool. Now, if it is Plagueis, and he can come back from the dead, then what does that mean? I don't know. Um. So yeah, that that was weird too. That was <laughs> that was weird. Um, I gotta say, Luke dressed in black looked really. I don't know. He looked weird. Ren looked pretty cool. Kylo Ren looked pretty cool in that battle. But uh, and I like how they're making him look a little like Vader back in the day, like. Uh, Christensen a little bit with the the eye scar and that stuff. Now the characters, I will say, the actors looked much cooler in this one than they did in the first one. They looked like tweeners. He, Kylo Ren, looked like a fucking tweener. Like I just want to punch him in the dick. He looked like a millennial penis, and he pissed me off. He actually looked kind of cool in this one. Like he's grown up a little bit more. He doesn't have that little emu haircut bullshit, all that stuff. Uh, Ray looked awesome. She's got this great face, especially when she like focuses. You know, she could use a boob job, but she's cute. I'm kidding, obviously. <laughs> whatever, I'm kidding. But, you know, whatever. But she's got, like, this great face. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, anyways. Actually, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the two of them were brother and sister, and Han had to drop her off somewhere, or, or, actually, because, no, fuck it, I actually, no, it'd be cool, and this actually plays into the story, the Millennium Falcon was there on the same planet, so what if she, their daughter, his sister, was on the Millennium Falcon, well, whoever stole it, or whatever, and just dumped her off somewhere, and they've been, and Han went off looking for her all this time, and that's what, that was the rift and everything, and then Kylo shit the bed. That would be a really cool little twist, I'm not gonna lie. That would be a cool little twist. That would be an awesome little twist. Because again, it would, it would play into the brother-sister aspect of Han and, uh, or, uh, Luke and Leia. It would play into their connection, it would play into a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I think that would be a really cool way to do it. Because again, that 
ship was on her planet. So whoever stole it, stole the ship, and she was dumped off. So think about it. She was dumped off. The Millennium Falcon is there. She was on the Millennium Falcon. Why was she on the Millennium Falcon? Because she is Han's daughter. That is fucking brilliant. I don't think they're going to go with that, but that would be fucking great. Because again, I don't think the I don't think the uh, the parents were just junk traders. And if he knows, if Kylo knows, maybe he does know, and he wasn't just fucking with her and made her think, well, they were just random junk dealers. It wasn't like, oh, Han Solo is your dad, <laughs> you know, the, the general is your is your mom, you know, I'm your brother. So he's fucking with her, trying to get her to the dark side, by basically stringing along with the whole parent thing. I don't know, that could totally, totally work for me. Um, that could absolutely work, I think it would be great, and I think they need to do it. Because um, that would tie it together in a really nice little family fuck you moment right there. Um... And but they need to they need to bring back Snoke. They need to do something with his ass. And I think they will. I think he's coming back. I don't think he's completely dead. So if he is like some sort of vampire, then because people were suggesting that he was there was suggestion somewhere. I don't remember if it was like actual suggestion or there's a character in the lore or something. I don't know that can basically is a, is a vampire of like the Force. So like if you're strong in the Force. He sucks the force from you and, you know, can regenerate himself or whatever. Um, so that would be kind of cool. Because I don't think his story is completely done. Because they made a big stink about him. And he had a big moment. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, by the way, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. And especially with whatever fan backlash there was about that. I think they have to do something with him. They have to definitely do something with him. He has to have a backstory. They have no backstory for him, at least not in the two movies. They may in like extended lore, but they don't have anything for him in the two movies. And they need to do they need to fix that. They absolutely need to fix that. Um and I think they're going to. I think that's what 9 is going to be all about. I think it's going to be learning who her parents are, because that's what we were expecting in this one, and we were like, oh, just random people, and we're going to learn about Snoke, oh, no, we didn't, so, that's my theory, I'm sticking to that shit, because that would make a great, seriously, can you imagine that, you watch, you, you, you watch 7, 8, and 9, and that's how it plays out, you learn that shit, that would be fucking great, now, I did, have a very interesting reservation about Luke at the end. Um, I had a feeling he was going to die. Um, not necessarily in the same way. I thought it would be very similar to Obi-Wan and Vader. And they sort of did that. They teased that. And I like that. And then he literally slices through him and it's like, what? And you realize he's First, my first initial thought was, holy shit, he's been dead this whole time, he's been a ghost. Which, I wasn't too far off, he wasn't technically dead, he was using his mind, much like Ray and, uh, uh, what's-his-face were doing, earlier when they were connecting. Um, so that was very cool. That was very cool, I thought that was, was kind of interesting. Um... Because at first you weren't really sure. It's like, okay, they started blasting him. So, because I knew he was going to be a martyr because he's the hope. He is the last hope. He's the new hope, whatever. And because they, they played it up really well because they sent out the distress call and nobody was answering. And then all of a sudden the legend, the hero, shows up and he basically dies, gets blown up or whatever at that moment. And you think that's going to be the rallying cry, like, oh my god, our hero has just died. You know, the the myth, the legend has just got, you know... And he becomes a martyr. And he rallies people to his cause. Which I thought was kind of cool. I like that idea. Um, but obviously you know he's not gone. 
I mean, he's gone maybe physically, but he's not. He's going to be back as the ghost. He's going to be in the ghost form. So, pfft, you know. Um. So yeah, I don't know how I felt about that. I am going to be curious what the hell they do with Leia, because apparently Leia was supposed to have a big plot thing as far as turning Kylo back to the light side. Um, now, he did mention that, you know, if you strike me down in anger, I will always be with you like your father. Um, I do think we need to see Han as a ghost. I really do. I just, even even if it's a CG thing, I don't care. You need to see Han. You need to see Leia and Han and Luke and maybe even Vader, Yoda, even Obi-Wan. You got to see them fuckers at the end. You just do. You have to see everyone, hell, even Qui-Gon. Throw the fucking lot of them in there. Throw every one of them in there. Um, you just do. They have to... if. Because I don't know what they're going to do after that. If they're going to do anything after that. Whether it's going to be a 10. Or they're going to start like a whole new series. They probably start a new series or an offshoot. Because like they're going to do Young Han Solo. So they'll probably do a couple of those. You know, shit like that. Um, which I don't know how I feel about that guy. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. He just doesn't look like Han to me. He's got a weird shaped head and it just bugs me. Um, he's got like a square for a head and it's just weird. Um... So who knows what they're going to do. But I think the main story is over. I mean, they'll probably do more stuff with Ray, and it'll probably be like a whole new series of that shit. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do going forward. But... Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Because there's definitely stuff they can do, and as long as that shit's making money, they're going to be pumping that shit out. Um... And uh, there's definitely other stories they can... Like, Rogue One. Again, my beef with Rogue One is the fact that, A, it's a throwaway story in the main story. But I love the fact that they went back and did it. I love the fact that they told a story that didn't need to be told, but they did just because it was cool. I like that. Now, the problem with that... there's Basically, my two biggest problems with that is the fact that after the first five minutes, two-thirds of the movie was a throwaway... And then the minute Vader shows up, it's cool again. So you got a throwaway story with two thirds of it at least being, you know, throwaway in and of itself. So it was kind of weird. It, that that story was kind of odd. Um, again, I love the fact that they did it, and I hope to see more. But ultimately, it just didn't really have a purpose. And then the other problem is that you got you see Vader, and he's going. He's going ham with the force, and he's, he's flipping around and doing shit. And then all of a sudden, you see him all stiff-legged in four. Like the transition was really weird. Um, but it's kind of cool because you you realize he can do that, but he's not. So it's like, is he being reserved? Now, technically, to be fair about that, they did, um, they did present that with Yoda back when he was going against, uh, uh, whatever the fuck his name was. Well, actually, he went against, uh, what's-his-face, uh, Christopher Lee there, and he went against, uh, uh, Sidious. Where all of a sudden he's, he's wobbling in on the cane, he's like, eh, 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 and, eh, and he's just flipping around and backflips and shit and lightsabers everywhere, and then all of a sudden at the end he grabs a cane and he starts hobbling around again. <clears throat> so they did set a precedent for that. So I, I can kind of dig that. But you don't really see that during the battle with Obi-Wan. I gotta be honest with you, looking back, that battle with the two of them, uh, I, I get that they were like two old guys, but uh, that could have been just a little bit better. Even the battle with Luke and uh, Numbnut in this one was a lot better than it probably should have been. I mean, considering Luke's like 90 million years old. Um... <laughs> so that initial battle was a little weird I don't know it's it, uh, I get it but I don't want to get it if that makes sense like I don't know 
Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention was... Freaking Leia, man. Holy shit. The bitch done got blown out in space. I was like, holy shit. I wasn't expecting that. I thought she was going to get blown up and, you know, that's the end of it, the cockpit. Because you knew he wasn't going to shoot her. You knew he was going to have that moment where it's like, mommy. You know, and that's going to be the end of it. And then the other guys come on, beep, 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 and shoot her. And then she blasts out in space. I'm like, holy shit. I, I literally stopped for a second. I was like, did they just blow her out in space? <laughs> and then you see her. And it was so cool the way they did that because she looked like she was young for a second there. I don't know if it was just lighting or if they purposely did that with like some sort of CGI. But she she looked like she was just, you know, like it was Leia of old kind of a deal. And she's kind of stretch out her hand and flies through the ship. That was just cool. It was completely illogical, but it was it was just fucking cool. Um, because that means she's got some serious power too. Because, you know, that's some serious fucking power right there. I mean, that's some serious fucking power. Um, because you never really know how much power she has or had, or, you know. Whatever. You never really see her use it. That was like the first time you actually got to see her use it or, you know, whatever. So, that was kind of cool. It was, like I said, it was illogical. I don't know if I, I don't know if I liked it collectively because, I mean, she was blown out in space and all of a sudden it's like, oh, the Force can save her and fly her back to the ship and, I don't know, it was kind of... I was iffy about the concept, but it just looked cool, so I'm going with it. I'm going with it that it was a positive and not a negative, even though it technically, if you think about it, was a negative. It was just very cool, so eh, it's, it's weird. Um, what else was there? Uh, the again, the vibe of the sh the whole the whole thing, the vibe, the weird humor. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if it was... I'm assuming it was the director. Um, it didn't feel like Star Wars to me. That whole casino section did not feel Star Wars to me. It didn't. It didn't feel like the uh, Hive of Scum and Villainy. It didn't feel like Jabba's Palace. It, it felt like something out of uh, Fifth Element or some shit. Or some random sci-fi movie. That's what it felt like. I miss the old school puppets. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, I mean, they look like shit back in the day. They could do some really cool stuff now. I miss that, like, physicality of them being there. All this CGI shit. Although, I admit, some of the characters do look pretty cool now in CGI. But they don't have the same soul that the other ones did, you know? Now, granted, some of the other ones look like shit. I'm not going to lie. Some of the originals in the original Star Wars look like shit. Okay, especially in that cantina section. Guido looked like shit. The one dude with the, the eye and the the, 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 whatever that fuzzy fucker was that got his arm blown up, got his arm ripped off by uh, the lightsaber. I mean, they look like shit physically, but they were still, like, physically viable in the in the setting. Which made them infinitely better than anything CGI. So, I really wish they would kind of bring back some of that. Because it's a lost art. Because, I'm sorry, you just don't see movies that take time to do that anymore. Um, like, some of the best movies that use CG, use it in the proper way. Like, you've got the foreground, which is real, and then the background is CGI. Or, like, George Lucas, when he did the original trilogies, or, I mean, not the original trilogies, but the original, like, one and two, one, two, and three, that motherfucker had nothing. He literally had green screen the entire fucking movie. There was nothing for them to interact with. Except for when they were on that little scooter thing, and they're, they're riding this green dildo, and a green, uh, a green, uh, green screen, and they're bobbing up and down on this fucking green dildo, and they were superimposed on on in a stupid little scooter flying around in, in two. I, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about that. 
But like I said, some of the best CGI is when you have shit to interact with, like legitimate stuff. Like the foreground is real. There's like a tree right there, a real tree, you know, as opposed to, let's just fill it all in later. That's why the the, the first trilogy sucked. It's 99% of why the first trilogy sucked. That and bad dialogue. I mean, seriously, if they fix some of that, some of those problems, and fix some of the dialogue, it, the first Phantom Menace would not have been so bad. It wouldn't have been. Because it had a lot of cool elements. I mean, seriously, only George Lucas could fuck up Darth Maul. Qui-Gon fucking Jim. Played by Liam Neeson, for fuck's sake. Young Obi-Wan. Played by Ewan McGregor. Young Anakin, for fuck's sake. Padme. Natalie Portman. I mean, seriously. You got Samuel L. Jackson as a Jedi. You got the Jedi Council. How do you fuck that up? How do you fuck that up? It was like Star Wars after 30 years. How do you fuck that up? Yet, they did it. They did it. They did it. I don't understand that, but they did it. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about any of it, to be honest with you. Like I said, it does not feel like Star Wars to me. It doesn't. I, I'm kind of finding Poe to be a little annoying. He was a little better in this one than he was in the, lot, the first one. Um, seven. Finn was... I liked, I actually kind of liked Finn in both... Ray was good. I, like, I I definitely like Ray in this one. I don't know. It's just I don't know if it's the direction they're going or I I just don't know if they're telling a cohesive story. I don't know, man. Like again, you look at the original Star Wars, the f number four. You know that told a story. It did. Then you look at the second one, Empire Strikes Back. Now, granted, yeah, it left on somewhat of a cliffhanger, but it wasn't a complete cliffhanger to the point of, you know, that, yeah, you're worried about Han, but, eh, shit happens, you know? You know they're going after him. They even said, after, you know, at the end of it, we're going after him. So even if three never happened, you know they're going after him. You know they're going to get him back. I mean, you just know it. Now, obviously, you want to see it. You want to see the fulfillment of that. Um, so, yeah. But. I don't know. It's just. These first two movies really haven't told much of a story. I mean, they've told a little bit of Ray's story, but they haven't really told anything. They didn't really explain anything. Like. Who is she? Why is she there? They did kind of explain why she has power. Because Kylo has power. And somebody else is going to rise up co-equally to go against them. That's just, you know, the balance of the Force. Which is cool. I, I dig that. I dig that argument. Or that uh, explanation. Because in the first one, you're like, why the fuck does she have all this power? And not only that, but she's kind of knowing how to use it. Like, oh, and all of a sudden she's just doing... Weird, random shit for no reason. I mean, if she had been trained, or you know, somebody had said something to her, and she focused, and like, oh, and she started doing stuff. Okay, cool. But she was getting she she was literally teaching herself as she went, and it, that felt really weird. I didn't like that, but it sort of explained itself by that argument that you know because Kylo was gaining in the in the dark side. Somebody else, her in this case, was going to gain in the light side, and she was literally kind of teaching herself because there was just so much power there that things were just kind of happening without her really even knowing why. So when you watch the first one, it doesn't make any sense, but then it was sort of explained. So that's about the only thing that was really explained. Like I said, I don't think her parents were junk traders. I think the people who stole the Millennium Falcon were junk traders. And she, that's probably all she remembers, being left by these people who stole the Millennium Falcon. 
So I don't know. I think I think there's definitely more to it because again, okay, why did Han leave? Because of Kylo, big deal. Now if he's off looking for his, his daughter, because he's been looking for the Millennium Falcon, the whole Chewie were home thing. Um, now he seemed to care more about the ship, but you could, you know, whatever. You could make that argument. I th- I definitely think it would be great if they were brother and sister. I think that'd be awesome. Because it would explain everything. It would explain why Han and Hala, Han and Leia kind of broke up. It would explain why Han is off looking for the ship. Because if he finds the ship, he's going to find the daughter. Or hopefully, or find a sign. Um, he and Chewie kind of went off. I th- That would totally totally make a great fucking story and I really think they need to do that but I went into all that just a minute ago um anything else I want to talk about uh I haven't seen the deleted scenes I haven't seen any of the special features blah 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 I am going to physically buy it on blu-ray a couple weeks from now when I get you know more money but uh, uh, anyways um yeah, I didn't hate the movie. I don't get why people were so upset with it. Um, I mean, I get why Luke died. He basically exerted himself to... I mean, I'm assuming he exerted himself to the fullest extent to do what he did, and it basically took everything out of him. He just... You know, I mean, again, I'm assuming that's what happened, unless I'm missing something. Um, a little, a little, I don't know. I mean, maybe in hindsight they shouldn't have killed him, especially with Carrie Fisher passing away. Um, because now, like the two main, got you know the two main people from from the past they you in other words it's kind of like what they did with uh batman when they killed off joker and then motherfucker goes and, and kills himself with the drugs and then for the third one it's like uh well yeah he was supposed to be in the third one but uh yeah because what they did is they ended up killing two face off in the first one or the second one and then the guy that they were going to bring back for the third one actually dies in real life so i mean think about it for nine, they were going to bring back Carrie Fisher. Well, she died in real life, and the two guys that could come back, they killed off in the movie. You know, Harrison Ford, uh, Han Solo, and uh, Luke Skywalker. They killed those two guys off. So it's like, what? What? Uh, I don't know. Um, let me think. Is there anything else to talk about? Um... Yeah, the cantina scene, or whatever that was, the casino scene, uh, that just felt out of place, actually, to be honest with you. They met with the smuggler guy. Um, I kind of wish they had done a little more with that guy, like, kept him around. I mean, I'm sure he's going to come back, but they could have done more with him. You know, instead of seeing BB-8 and the stupid uh, AT-AT, it should have been him or something. It's like, you know... I don't know. It, that character was a little weird. That whole sequence was just weird. I mean, I get what they were trying to do. I get I get why they were trying to do it, but it turned out to be like... Because it was one of those last-ditch efforts, and it just turned out to be like... Oh, well... Eh, and then they pulled the fast one where it's like Leia's in cahoots with the the other bitch general there who's who's being mean to what's his face. Even though what's his face was just being a dick. It there was a weird weird little how do you do there? Um Yeah, I don't know. I, that was just weird to me. That whole sequence just felt off. Like because <laughs> It's like, they go through this whole thing and it just mounts to nothing. They, they could have cut that whole sequence out and you wouldn't have missed anything in the movie. 
I mean, yeah, Finn wouldn't have had a lot to do, and, you know, the stupid silver tin bitch wouldn't have had anything to do. Um, <clears throat> but aside from that, they could have cut that whole sequence out. And... Like, okay, they're going to set it up to do it. Set up the mutiny and the whole nine, and then all of a sudden, Carrie Fisher, you know, Leia wakes up, slaps him, and says, no, stop that. And then they send off the transports. I don't know, it's just really... Uh, really weird. Just a weird, 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 weird movie, dude. Weird movie. But I didn't dislike it, so I don't know why people who are calling for it to be taken out from canon. I don't understand why people hated it so much. Um, now, if they hated it because it was weird, I could see that, but I don't know if it was stricken it from canon weird enough. I don't know if it was that bad. Um, unless I'm missing something, or, again, I'm curious what commentaries are going to say about it, because it's just going into it blind, I was like, ah, eh, this isn't so bad. I mean, there's some good moments, there were. And some of the humor, I think, was interesting and had potential. I just don't know if they delivered properly with it. And the humor, like I said, the humor was... The humor was odd. Very, 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 very... I keep saying odd and weird. But that's definitely how I would describe this movie. I liked it, though. That's the problem. I actually thought I, I was thought I was going to rage quit it. Because everybody's like, oh, we got stricken from canon. I was going to be pissed off. Oh, they did something and blah, blah, blah. They're going to add this. They're going to add that. They're going to do something stupid. You know. And really, with the exception of the odd humor, that whole cantina scene, or the whole casino scene, and the checklist of minorities at the beginning that really had no purpose other than to just show it. Those are really my my major nitpicks. I mean... I wish they had explained a little bit more about Luke's reasoning for wanting to end the Jedi. I mean, they did, but they didn't really... It's like they explained it, but I don't think they explained it deep enough or explained it well enough. I, I don't know, it's weird. I think they needed to explain it just a little bit more. I don't know. I think I think that was... But that's a mild nitpick, because, again, they did explain it. Just, I don't know if it was enough. Um, well, I get another odd situation... They never tell Luke about Han. He just sort of... Han? And then you see him all moping. So it's like... Ah, you know... It's like you want to hear him... Or you want to hear them say, Yeah, Han died. He killed his father. And you want to see the look on his face. And they don't really show you that. You don't really get that moment. There's not really that payoff. You get the... Oh, I failed him, I'm really bad. And then R2 shows up. And, you know. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot, there's a few little problems with the movie. I'm not going to sit there and pretend it's the greatest thing ever, but... I didn't hate it. I actually kind of enjoyed it in certain places. Um, I mean... There did feel like there was a couple battle, a couple Star Wars esque battles, like again the one where they're they're on the ship and uh, Finn is captured. Finn and the Asian chick or uh, Rose, whatever her name is, they're captured, and then the, the silver bitch comes out. Like that whole sequence really wasn't needed. Um, they didn't technically need to have the the battle with the uh, the Red Guard, but I get it. It makes sense, and the Red Guard are kind of cool. Um, they've been around for a while. So, now one thing I, I don't really understand, and it may have been explained in the first movie, or even in this one to some degree, but I wish they would hammer home the point of, like, who are these new people, these new bad guys? They're not the Emperor, or they're not the Empire, 
but there's something else, or like the, the First Order or whatever. It's like, I wish they'd delve into just what that is exactly. Again, maybe they did, and I just don't remember, or I didn't get it, or I didn't, you know, or I didn't compute. I don't know. But I'd like to know, like, I don't, like, I couldn't tell you what their motivation is other than, you know, oh, there's all this technology laying around, let's just pick it up and use it. I mean... Are they are they trying to do the same thing the Empire was doing? Are they trying to do something different? It's like, I don't really get all that. Um, again, that may have been explained. But, a lot like everything else, I don't think they explained it well enough. Just kind of a ho-hum explanation that doesn't really, you know... There's no real revelations here. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. But, again, if they save the real revelation, like, for example, who her parents are, who Snoke was, and Snoke actually comes back, if they do those three things, and they do it satisfactorily, I think it'll be a great episode nine. Now, what they do without Leia, I don't know. I mean, who else is going to get him to turn back to the, to the, you know, light side? Because you could say, yeah, his mother. Now, unless they bring Han in as a ghost form, which I think would be very cool, and do a scene that way. Um, oh, maybe they could, maybe they could bring Han back, do a couple scenes, and like try to try to chip away at that. Maybe that because. The only way it's going to work, if they're going to continue with the story that they were going to do, Han has to come back in a ghost form. He has to be. Because there has to be that family connection. It obviously would have worked better with Leia, but obviously she's not there. So, you know, unless they replace Leia with somebody else, which I don't know if I like that, but I hope they don't do like a CG thing, but... Uh, I don't know. <sighs> like, what else can they do, though? You know? I don't I don't know. Um anything else quick I want to talk about? Uh The music didn't do much for me. It had kind of the the music, but like I don't know, I didn't really notice the music that much. I didn't I didn't really feel that, you know, bum bum ba bum bum ba bum. I didn't really get that feeling in this. It was just more like hmm, yeah, it was just kind of weak. I didn't, the music didn't do it for me. Because, well, to be fair, the music that I do remember was not something to remember, which is weird. So I may have, maybe not remembering the good stuff, I don't know, but... Huh, um, yeah, it wasn't my favorite music score. Especially of, you know, what, nine movies now? Yeah, nine movies now. Going on ten. So, like, but like I said, I don't know what the backlash was because there was some legitimate hatred and anger for this movie. And again, other than having a really weird overtone, just weird overtone, like this this just blanket of poop over top of it. Um, I don't know. I I don't. I just I I. I enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Um, like, I could understand Hamill was a little upset with, okay, I don't really think this other character would do it. Um, but, I don't know, maybe, I mean... I don't know, did they go in the right direction with it? Because, I mean, let's be honest, he started training these, these young kids and all of a sudden... His own nephew turns on him. Now, how did Snoke get control of Ren? It doesn't make sense. Unless Snoke was a student, too. Because, I mean, if you look at the original, okay, <clears throat> Anakin was seduced by Palpatine, who was in disguise and hiding 
from the Jedi. The Jedi is literally under their nose, and they couldn't tell he was there. He didn't. They didn't know he was there. And he was secretly manipulating Anakin. So, how did Snoke manipulate Rin? I, did, I don't know. I mean, they have to explain that. They have to... They definitely have to explain that. <clears throat> um... I don't know how I feel about the cave. Your failure at the cave. Remember your failure. I don't know about that. Um, it was kind of cool where she's standing and she's like snapping and it's like... Do, 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 do. Uh, I mean, that was cool. I liked that, but... Because I'm telling you, I think there's something there. Because she went down in the cave. She touched the, the glass thing and she's like... I went to do about my parents. And nothing. Nothing. They didn't get anything. And then all of a sudden, Kylo Ren's like, Hey, I know who your parents are. <laughs> Random drunk people. <laughs> I, I think that's a... I think... I definitely think that's fake. I think that's... I think that's uh, fake news. <clears throat> I do. I think, I think they're going to use that as a ploy to explain just who her parents are. And like I said, I definitely think it would be awesome if it was Han and Leia. Because, well, actually, if that... They may have to actually do that, because Han is dead, Leia's dead, and the only one who could get him back to the to the light side is Kith and Kin, his sister. Which, I, that would be really, really cool. Because she's going to bring him to the light side, obviously. That's just how it's going to be. She has to, because she's the only one left. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's just how it is, because, you know, so yeah, I think that's going to be a thing in nine, I think you're going to find out who her parents really are, because there was that whole thing about Han and Leia having twins, and it's kind of been a... I don't know if it's canon, but it's been kind of established. Yeah, we never really see it. We just hear about Ben. And that's about it. So, yeah, I don't know. I think you're going to find out they're brother and sister. I really do. Because, again, it would bring back the cool dynamic of, you know, Luke and Leia. And it would be this nice little tie-in. Dude, it would tie in perfectly. It would be great. And like I said, the only one who's going to bring him back is her. And why? Because she's his sister. Um, like, if they... I'm curious if today they would even consider doing, like, a kiss scene between Luke and Leia. Like they did in the original. And then turn it up be, well, it's my sister... Like, I wonder if they even have the guts to do something like that now. Because that's what made it kind of cool, because it was like, okay, you know, because you don't know at the time, and they didn't know at the time, and it was like, eh. And she only kissed him, she only kissed Luke to get back at Han. So it was kind of like, oh, there's only the only man in the room, other than Chewie. Well, let me give him a kiss on the lips, you know. Then you find out, oh, it's my sister. Again, I don't think they'd have the guts to do that kind of stuff in today's day and age. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, I think that's about all I got to talk about. I'm fucking tired, man. That's like three hours of my life here. Oh, three and a half hours. Almost four hours of my life, dude. I am legitimately tired. Holy crap. Um... Yeah, it was a long movie. But, I definitely, I enjoyed it. I really did, even though, I don't know, I just, part of me doesn't want to say I enjoyed it, but I did. But now I'm thinking about it, am I second guessing it, or was there just a lot of stupid shit? Again, it was a lot of weird shit, and it's like, did the weird shit build up to the point where I didn't have a good time? 
No, it probably should have, but I... I had a good time with it, so... Uh, it's a mixed bag. It really is. Um, I did enjoy the first one. I say first one meaning seven, obviously. Um, but I don't think they really told a decent story there either. It was kind of... Okay, here's a couple tidbits and... You know... Whatever. That was kind of the extent of it. Um, but yeah, they need to go dialogue heavy in 9. And they need to explain a few things. And they need to... Basically what I outlined. They do that, it's going to be a great episode 9. Absolutely great episode 9. Um, anyways... Yeah, anyways, that's it. That's all I got.